Greetings, Satria Call, Dr. Joseph Martin. I'm very happy to present to you the founder of the Sikh tradition, Guru Nanak. He was born in 1469 and passed over into spirit in 1539 in the Common Era. He was born in Lahore, Pakistan, a place today known as that, and he is the founder of the Sikh tradition. He's the first of 10 human Sikh gurus, and the 11th is the text written in Gurmukhi of all his divine revelations called the Guru Granth Sahib. And uh, blessings upon all the Sikhs in the world today. I myself am a Sikh as being a universalist, and I wish only to teach all those people in the world today about the beauty of Guru Nanak and his philosophy of not only divine freedom, but certainly mostly as a very holy, saintly, uh, intelligent man, the path to devotion and union with God. This path to devotion and union with God is really the core essence of Guru Nanak, his personality, his life, his teachings, and his travels. Now, he was witnessing all the suffering and the hatred and the violence in the uh, 15th century and 16th century AD after Christ in this common era that were upsetting to his heart and his soul, caused great sorrow to Guru Nanak. And uh, based on this uh, and some of his travels in the, his vicinity of his hometown, when he was 30 years of age, he had some major visions, uh, direct guidance and communication with God, in which for three days his clothes were found on the shore of a bank of a river, and people thought that he had drowned. But after three days, he actually came back, and uh, he put his clothes on, and he had completed his vision and came back with a message of unity of all world religions with just one God. And this is, of course, the, one of the great things about Guru Nanak. His presence in our day today is very telling and important. Uh, along with all his uh, many revelatory divine suggestions, he has a, a gift for music. And he traveled with his good friend, a Muslim friend, by Mardana, who was a minstrel uh, and a, a good singer, a beautiful voice, in fact, and created songs everywhere they went. Now, they went on five great long journeys on foot. They went north, east, south, and west. They went all the way to the northern parts of India, to Tibet. They went to Lhasa, to Samye Monastery there and uh, got a lot of information, but also uh, dealt with and healed a lot of uh, people there in the Tibetan tradition and gave them some great news of the unity of all uh, world religions and divinity. They went to the east, of course. They went to India, to Assam. They went to Bengal. They went to the south. They went to the west. They went to Medina and Mecca. They went to the entire Arab world. They basically traveled most of the known world on foot at that time, and they went thousands and thousands of kilometers, spreading the music and the uh, mantra singing and messages, mostly in Gurmukhi. Now, Sikhism is a most beloved spiritual tradition, and what Guru Nanak warned about was the dangers of egotism, the dangers of putting yourself before God and putting yourself before other people and judging other people. And he felt that this was a cause not only of all the individual suffering of people and their families, individuals, but he felt it was the cause of great injustice and warring among people of different world religions. And his message to his time, and certainly to our time, is to put an end once and for all to the inequality and the judgment and the murder that comes when one religion or the people of one religion think their religion is better than another. I think in a humble way we can 
uh, aspired to the virtues that Guru Nanak himself lived and showed and taught, which is equality, uh, beauty, union with the divine to overcome your egotism, the importance of maintaining and living a virtuous life, and the joy of living in the divinity of the union in the heart, and bringing that joy and sharing that in an equal sense with all the sisters and brothers of all the face of the planet. A very wonderful and timely saint is Guru Nana. Now, it's also really important and clear to say that his message is still alive right now. Uh, you can uh, read the Guru Granth Sahib, as I do, and you can visit in your heart the eternal golden palace of Amritsar, uh, whether you go there physically or not. Most importantly, I think you can uh, follow his teachings through the singing or listening to the great mantras with wonderful melodies in Gurmukhi, many of which have been brought to the West by many great people, including many great present saints who have come to the West to start the 3HO Foundation and so on. There are many people uh, whose music I listen to, uh, wonderful, beautiful music of these mantras sung. They're available online and on CD, and just for instance, although there are many others, you can listen to some of these great Guru Nanak revelatory mantras uh, sung and played by Sanatam Kar. Well, the life of Guru Nanak is certainly timely for us, and I wish all the Sikhs and the non-Sikhs of the world a, a deep, spiritual, peaceful blessing at this time and at all times. My goal is to allow people to educate themselves about all the great spiritual traditions on the planet and the great spiritual mystics and saints who brought these great revelatory uh, gifts and gems to us now. So blessings be upon Guru Nanak and all the Guru Sikh saints, the Guru Granth Sahib, all the Sikhs in the world, and all the non-Sikhs in the world, who we all now know that there is just one God and many paths up to the light. But may we be blessing and open and clear and accepting with warmth in our hearts all the traditions of, and all the peoples of the world, no matter their religious faith at this time. So I say to you all, Satriya Kal, and all blessings to Guru Nanak and all the peoples of the world, all the one sisterhood, brotherhood of all humanity.